everybody. It's my expected comments, and it, you can see we're here at Terrificon at Mohegan Sun. As you can see, a lot of people here, a lot of vendors. There's going to be a lot of really cool uh, content creators here. We'll swing by, we'll see what we can find, and we'll see if we meet up with any uh, YouTube creators as well. So uh, stay tuned. Hey everybody, it's Mark Spector Comics. As you saw from my intro, I was at Terrificon. Uh, I was there on Friday, shortly after it opened. It was around 1, 1.30, got there right around 2. Um, walked around, had a great time. I figured out of the three days, the Friday was gonna work best for me. You know, we we're on the latter half of my vacation and um, Friday just, you know, seemed right. So, um, Went there with my wife and my son, their first time going to a convention, and uh, they seemed to have a good time. Um, was there for maybe about three hours. So, uh, you know, when you're there for that short of a period, you gotta be like time oriented, really organized, disciplined, and know what you want to get out of the, um, the convention. So, you know, I know a lot of people usually they'll go for the weekend, they'll uh, spend all day, you know, Saturday, whatnot, but uh, went on Friday, had a good time, met some, uh, you know, comic book creators, walked around, ended up going to some booths, looked for some books, and I got to uh, meet some YouTube creators as well. So um, I'll show you some of the clips, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the experience. All right, here we go. Out here, my buddy Otto, I'm in the in the basement. We're hanging out at Terrificon, having a good time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Dude, it's been a great time. Thank you for coming by the booth. Absolutely. It's only we're only four hours into it, and the people that we've seen just amazing, and the conversations and putting names to all these faces have just been fantastic. Yeah, Appreciate all your support, man. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah, just just yeah, no, it's been yeah, great. It's you know, and this is a light. This is different for us. We've never done this. Usually, we're just mm -hmm. hopping around and trying to talk. And now that we got the booth, a good few more places to come. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Right, thank you, man. We got it, bro. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I finished up at the convention. Picked up a couple of things. Almost finished a huge trade, but unfortunately it didn't happen. I'll find out if the book ended up selling at the end. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But uh, stay tuned for the final video. I'll wrap it up and then I'll talk about it later. All right. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoyed those clips. I still was able to get a decent amount of footage, even though I was there for just a few hours. Like I said, you saw that great little clip I had there with Otto, um, three men in the basement. Really nice guy, really cool to hang out with for a little bit. And um, also dropped by Very Gary's booth, did a little bit of digging through there. 
like I said, did a lot, a lot of hunting through the different vendors. Um, didn't end up picking up anything, you know, too too crazy. Uh, I did bring three books with me. I did drop off my um, Venom threes, uh, first and third printing to get signed by Donny Cates, and then I had my uh, Bloodstone number one. Scott Hanna was there, so I uh, ended up getting that signed, and uh, that's gonna get you know going off to uh, CGC. Other thing I was a little disappointed is that CGC wasn't even there. So um, I had to go through a facilitator there and uh, they ended up taking care of that for me. So that was pretty cool. Um, so what I ended up picking up there, there was a terrific con exclusive for Moon Knight number one. There was the trade dress and the Virgin. When I got there, it was like a little after 2.30, 3 o'clock. The Virgins were already sold out. I was like, wow, that was pretty quick. But I was able to um, snag uh, four copies of the trade dress so that was pretty cool and there's two uh, three and four so I uh, was able to get four copies I personally you know I liked the trade dress because it actually has the word bubbles on there and it's a much you know closer resemblance to the uh, werewolf by night 32 than what the Virgin was because the Virgin didn't have the uh, word bubbles on there. So, um, you know, it, you know, I, I personally like the trade over the uh, the Virgin, and it wasn't that bad. They were 15 bucks a piece. The Virgin variants, I think, were around 35, 40 bucks. Um, I talked to the lady there at the booth. She said there was going to be more coming that night. Hopefully, I don't know if that, you know, came to fruition or not. But um, I was happy nonetheless with the um, the trade dresses. So um, and you know they were done by uh, Ken Lashley, and uh, he wasn't there, so that would have been pretty cool to get a sign by him. But um, he wasn't at the convention. Um, I said it probably a few times before, but Terrific Con is my favorite convention to go to locally. I think it is the best, you know, uh, Comic Con locally in the New England area. Um, far better than New York Comic Con it's more comic book oriented than you know the other conventions in the area um, there are conventions larger there are smaller but this one gets really focused with the uh, comic you know creators very comic book uh, vendor oriented and a little bit of uh, your fan you know your fan expo there with the um, celebrities and you know actors actresses and um, other like uh, wrestling and so forth um, so I, that's why I think it's it's my favorite convention to go to. The creators there are really nice. They had a great panel. Uh, Donnie Cates was there. Scott Hanna, Keith Williams, um, Al Milgram. Uh, who else was at Paul Mounts? There, there was it was quite a bit. It, it was a, a pretty good line of uh, content creators there. And um, oh, I forgot to mention too. Uh, Joe G was there, Joe uh, Giella, he was there I think only Saturday, so I was, uh, didn't have the chance to meet him. But um, th there was a really stacked lineup of content creators. And uh, I talked a little bit about the trade. There was a trade I came so close to uh, making. There, So uh, my 2021 goal list, one of my items to get was uh, Submariner Comics. Any one of the issues from the Golden Age, a timely run. And that's from the 1940s. Um, there was only one vendor there uh, that had a book from what I saw going, you know, all through the vendors that were there for the time. And he had a Submariner Comics issue number 17 from, I think it was September of 1945. It's a great cover, Alex Schomburg cover. Uh, you see him shooting the machine gun, Namor the Submariner. And uh, there's a big like U.S. you know military um, like medic warship in the background. It's a really cool cover. I'll put a picture in there as well. And it was graded at a 4.5. Um, I think it was cream to off white pages, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, he was asking 1,500 for it. And I was like, all right, well, do you have any wiggle room on that book? You know, I, I said like, yeah, somebody offered me 1300 for it in cash, I believe he said. And um, the owner turned it down. I was like, huh, well, at least, you know, he had some wiggle room on it. 
and I was like, okay, well, I don't have that cash on me, but um, well, you do a trade. So the uh, the manager and the owner were both there, and uh, the manager was like, all right, cool. You know, what do you got for me? So I uh, I took out my uh, Eternals one, uh, CGC nine point six, and my all new Marvel point now uh, number one, the uh, first full you know Kamala Khan, I believe that's what the title's called, and that was a nine point six as well. You know fair market they were over you know whatever the uh, it was you know I think 16 1700 bucks and uh, he was asking 1500 for his so I was like all right value wise it's there you know the value is there uh, it's gonna be whether or not the um, the guy wants to part with it so uh, I was like you know talking to him a little bit kind of swaying on there I was like yeah you're gonna get your money's worth the books gonna be going up in value obviously the Submariner book is quite a hard book to get. Like I said, through all the vendors I went to, that was the only one that had a Golden Age Submariner or any Submariner in general. And the manager was like tempted or like, let's do this, let's do this, you know, the value's there. And he was like, let's do it then. But he had to obviously talked to his owner and he was like, well, you know, I'm a little attached to the book. The uh, I bought this in a collection, so he didn't have much into it. And uh, Golden Age Submariners do not come by often. And I was like, I completely agree, you know. And um, you know, but this was a book I've been looking for for quite some time. I just haven't seen one for a decent price. And I was like, all right, well, if you know, I do have a lot of Eternals that come in, and he had an Eternals there on the wall. But his was an 8-0 and it wasn't selling. I was like, well, yeah, it's because it's an 8-0. I have a 9-6 for you. Somebody wants a 9-6 or 9-8, it'll sell. It'll sell right away. So I was like milking him a little bit, you know, getting doing the uh, the trade, the trade talk. And I was like, all right, you know. And then I was like, well, what else? I also have like a She-Hulk 1. So I had brought out my She-Hulk 1, a CGC 9.6. I was like, is this something maybe you're interested in? And I was like, because eh, the value's there as well. The value is pretty equal, almost equal to um, the all now uh, CGC 9.6 and this uh, full Kamala Khan. So he was like looking it up, you know, looking up the prices. I was like, do you mind if I look up the uh, Submariner book? And I was like, I wasn't going to be able to find any any sales data on it because it's not a book that comes up for auction often. But um, I was, you know, I was playing the game, per se. And uh, basically what it came down to is the owner was too attached to the book and uh, he didn't want to make the trade even though the value was there. And I completely understand that's part of the deal. You know, sometimes if one party is not as, you know, feeling it's a good deal for them, then they won't sell it. You know, for me, it would have been a good deal because I'd be getting a book I wanted, the value was there, and it made sense to me. It made sense to the manager, but the uh, like I said, the owner was too attached to the book, and unfortunately, the deal was not made. So uh, that was that. I spoke to uh, one of my buddies who was there today, and he said that the book wasn't there. So basically, it either sold for the price that he was listing it for, $1,500, or he put the book away after that, you know, trade talk I had with him. So I don't know. Um, I do have the uh, the vendor's contact information, so I can always reach to him after the convention. But uh, that was the one big book I was trying to get that I wasn't, you know, unfortunately able to get. Um, so I only ended up coming out with the uh, Moon Knight Terrificon exclusives, and then the three books I sent out to the uh, for grading. So uh, that was my experience. Like I said, I had a blast. I was there for the, you know, for Friday. I know a lot of the people locally went today, Saturday, to go check it out. And it sounds like they had great times too. So um, that's it for my video, my experience at Terrificon. If you like this, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, Mark's with the Comics, out.